Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. All right, Summer House Martha's Vineyard is so much fun. It's on Bravo. Uh, it's giving us a look into a wild group of friends vacationing together in the popular hot spot, including Preston Mitchum, who's joining me today. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. First off, happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. Yes. What does Pride mean to you? Pride means so many things to me. You know, I mean, I always want to remember the history of Pride, which is why I always say Pride is and was and always will be a riot. Mm -hmm. uh, really, I just I just always want to honor right our ancestors and our transestors who really set the foundation for us to be able to celebrate Pride. I think Pride also is, you know, love and liberation and freedom and joy and all of those things. And for me, that's really important right now um, as we think about all of the anti-LGBTQ legislation, um, as we think about suicidal ideations increasing, as we think about young folks who don't really know who they are and are sometimes being prohibited, even when they do know who they are. So Pride means all of those things, but for me, it's really an act of joy in love and resistance. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I could not agree more. Um, you know, with this show, I first of what I love is you are a part of the LGBTQ community. You're representing because, you know, looking back on, you know, Summer House, Winter House, this whole genre, we didn't have a lot of inclusion. And, you you know, it tended right. to be a little more about, you know, straight hookups and, you know, relationships and stuff. But I love that here you are, you come into this group of friends, you're in a relationship and you're, you know, telling your story and being a part of the conversation. What was it like for you to kind of be a part of, you know, just increasing that representation and it's kind of a show? It means the world to me, honestly. I, I always think about how many queer folks I've seen on TV and especially black, black queer folks I've seen on TV or not seen on TV, frankly, and how we come across, whether we're a stereotype or a caricature. And I just wanted to be myself, right? Like I, I know these people, a lot of them are my friends. I've known them for years. And I'm like, I want to be as intellectual, as wild, as drunk, right? Like all the dimensions of who I am on or off camera. Like that is how I want to show up. Um, and I just think there's something that's so beautiful about like me being with a group of my friends, all who are straight in this moment, right? Um, who just let me be, right? And even if they didn't let me be, I was gonna be anyway. <laughs> but, but I think there's something that's so beautiful about that. And I'm grateful that Bravo um, and that Bravo fans are able to see that, right? Like, it's yeah. just, we don't, I don't, I just don't believe we get these opportunities often. And I, I just treat it with a badge, a badge, as a badge of honor. You know, maybe halfway or so through, you know, this, you know, that you basically this group of 12 friends, they get together in this fancy house for about 15 days. And then it's a lot of drama. But I also love that there's a lot of important conversations that, that happen within the group about being black, black culture, all of that. How important was it for you not to just have a be about the fighting and then the hookups, but also to have conversations about what it means to be, you know, a black, you know, queer person for you or just, you know, for being a black person, you know, navigating, you know, with the professional world and all of that, that like the rest of them. Yeah, like, and this is, my statement is not to say that other communities don't do this, right? I can only speak from my experience as a Black person. And one thing that that is true about the Black community is that we are we are going to have every type of conversation that you can find possible, right? And so some of it will feel hard in some moments, but it's necessary for community building. So oftentimes think about how, you know, even when we were about to take a shot and I was like, hey, no, hey, can we stop talking about Black excellence, right? And yeah. then we went back to taking a shot. And then, right, and it's, I've always, I, I just always have found that to be that way. We're going to have these great moments, these hard moments, these really rough patches. And at the end, it's family. At the end, it's community. At the end, it's love. Um, and that's just so important for us to see. Like, I can't, I can't think of how many times I've seen multi dimensions of Blackness be expressed on TV. Certainly not reality TV for the most part. And for me, that's just important, right? We're not just all drinking and partying, right? Yeah, are those are there going to be elements of that? Always, right? We're vacationing in the summer, right? Are there going to be elements of us like having emotional moments and crying? Absolutely. Are we going to have some intellectual discourse? Absolutely. And I think all of that needs to be seen in a way because it's beautiful, right? Like we're not always going to agree, but what is the common denominator after all the fights, after all the arguments, after all the drinking? Where are we? Right. 
Yeah, and it, it is an interesting dynamic. We have a, a couple who's married that's, you know, mm -hmm. part of the group. We have singles, obviously. And then for you, I know you came into this in a relationship. Mm -hmm. How did you navigate that? And, you know, what kind of conversations did you have to have with your partner? Because, you know, I do think that there is that kind of um, thought that, you know, these shows tend to be hookup shows, but obviously yeah. if you're the only queer person, it may not yeah. have. It's, it's a whole yeah. different <laughs> Right, right. So it's funny because I, I am blessed with such a supportive partner, uh, like unbelievably blessed with a supportive partner who really just wants the best for me. And I mean, the reality is neither of us expected for me to be on reality TV. <laughs> it, it's something that has happened over, over time, right? Like I, I have spent my career, right? As an attorney, as someone in advocacy, you know, I've worked for massive organizations like the Trevor Project and the Center for American Progress and small organizations. And that for me was my life trajectory. That is just what I saw it as um, until this opportunity came about. And I had to really think about my partner, my friendships, my relationships, like, these people are also going to be, you know, involved in all of this unintentionally or intentionally. Um, and he was just like, I just want you to do what you think is best for you, right? Like, I know you enough to know that you are rational, you're reasonable, and you know, you, you will you will be exactly who you, who you are. Um, and so he's very supportive. I will say that it is interesting being the only queer person, you know, I always want for, you know, more queer representation. I'm never comfortable being the only one. I mean, no shade. I think there are some of us who are comfortable <laughs> with being the only one. Um, it's nothing that I want because I want all of us to eat. I want all of us to be able to have access to to different things. But you know, like, uh, listen, we, my couple, my, my partner and I are also like open for the most part about our like non-monogamy and like what exploring exp like relationships look like. You know, we don't get into much this season probably, um, but we 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 talk about that. And so even if there was an opportunity for like more queerness like on the show and more queer people, there still needs to be conversations about respect and love and pride and what that looks like. And also like, you know, how do you actually show or explore like? you know, sex with queer people on TV if that happens in the future, right? And so I, I just, I think it's, I'm, you're, you see me beaming with smiles because I'm just like, the opportunities are endless for what could possibly happen on this show in the future, assuming we get another season, right? I, I just think there are so many opportunities there. Yeah, maybe your partner will be part of season two. I mean, we saw people bring their boy, other boyfriends in and all of that. So you know what, I, I hope that for that too. Um, you know, I think about like the cast, you have one of your, you know, you were in a frat back in the day. You have one of your frat brothers with you in this trip on this show. Are, are we gonna get to see you have any conversations about kind of your journey to, you know, um, you know, with finding who you are and acceptance and all that? You Did you get a chance to chat with any of the other housemates about that? I did, I did. And you know, and again, I don't know what's gonna, you know, what's gonna ultimately make, but I do know we definitely had some conversations in green screen and also with, with cast about it. Because one thing, you know, I'll be honest, I'd share this with a couple of castmates, you know, and, and, and friends in the house, you know, it, it started to become an isolating experience being the only queer person. Yeah. And I think, I think for a long time, like maybe they didn't sense that because we are friends and sometimes as friends, I can just kind of be like, whatever, let's just have a good time. But I think it started, it, I don't know what the moment was, but there was certainly a moment where I was like, no one is getting to know me. Right. It, like it felt like I was always holding everyone up all the time. I was always consoling every single person in the house and no one was like, Preston, how are you doing? Right are you managing do you you know there were some times we were like do you miss your partner but it was it was rare and I, I share with a few of them I'm like I'm sorry I'm starting to feel really isolated and I think it's connected to me being gay and yeah. I'm like and that's not a malicious statement I don't think it's malicious and I was like but there's something that is I am different than you all in this house and I'm like you probably don't feel it in this way but I do and so, you know, we do, you know, I do throw a, a, a big celebratory thing about being queer. So, you know, we'll we'll see more of that. But I, I definitely think you'll get to see me be, you'll see me explore myself and talk about acceptance a little bit more down the season. I can't wait for that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you know, as queer people, as a gay man, I tend to fall into loving all things Bravo. Before this coming onto the show, were you into that? Are you a Housewives fan? What other? I Bravo am. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I'm definitely a Bravo gay. 
<laughs> tell me, tell me some of your favorites, the other Bravo celebrities. Now that you are one, who else would you like to meet? Who are your favorites? Oh my gosh. So I will say the, the kindest person I've met so far um, has by far been Candace from Potomac. I, I mean, uh, like, uh, genuinely, I mean, we were walking down U Street. It was like three in the morning. And I hear this woman from down the street, what's Mr. Mitchell? And I'm like freaking out now because I'm like, okay, these things can happen. But it was Candace. <laughs> of all people, it was Candace. And I mean, just the sweetest thing in the world. Um, I also really love Karen Huger. Um, never had a chance to meet her. I have met Ashley Darby. Um, I ironically enough, I don't think I've met anyone from Atlanta yet, with the exception of Marlo. Yeah. Um, and some years ago I've met Candy. I mean, it was so short that I'm sure she doesn't remember it, but um, I met Candy. Um, and then of course, like I've met quite a few people from from the original Summer House. Um, and like a few others actually on different shows. So yeah, um, but I, I I have loved Bravo for probably from the Queer Eye days, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> which was, yeah, which was a while ago, obviously. So yeah. I love that. And you know what, Candace, I love that because she kind of gets a bad rap sometimes, especially like with Girls Trip. I was like, she's uh -huh. hating on her so bad. Yeah, I think it's because Candace is absolutely, I think, a spitfire. Yeah. Like she will abs and I say that in a very positive way. Like I, I think she will absolutely tell you what is on her mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing is, Candace, uh, the one thing I think I've sized it up to is Candace is quick with her words. Yeah. And many people on Housewives and actually many Bravo shows are not. So <laughs> can like Candace brain and mouth move at the same time. <laughs> and you'll find many people, they're like one after they're processing. And by the time Candace like cusses you out, she's already walked away and you're like, wait, what happened? <laughs> so I, and I think some people cannot, they just can't, like it's a skill. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Well, Preston, it's been so great to meet you. Like I said, uh, I can't wait to see how the rest of the season unfolds. It sounds like there's some good storylines and things to watch out for for you. Let's hope for another season. Maybe your partner can join, but until then everyone, you can catch Summer House Martha's Vineyard Sunday nights at nine on Bravo TV. You'll love it. I love it. I'm hooked. Uh, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, and happy Pride. Happy Pride.